for the topic of previous tech talk session, I have chosen as the introduction to Microsoft Power Automate. So basic intention of today's tech talk session is to give you an introduction to Microsoft Power Automate and it, its features and what is a uh, Microsoft Power Automate is used for. So with having that basic intention in our mind, I have prepared today's agenda. So as per the today's agenda, we are going to first, we are going to discuss what is Microsoft Power Automate and what is its features and what we can use Microsoft Power Automate for. And then we are going to discuss about the its capabilities and we are going to see how Microsoft Power Automate will work with the different data sources and its connectors. And finally, we are going to briefly look at or get an overview about different types of the flaws in Microsoft Power Automate. And finally, I, uh, I will show a small kind of a demo for a scenario which we can use the Microsoft Power Automate. So without further, further ado, uh, we move the content. So as per the agenda, so, so first we are going to look at what is Microsoft Power Automate. So as Microsoft Power Automate, as its name suggests, Power Automate is all about process automation. So Microsoft Power Automate is a service which allows you to create automated workflows between or integrate in different types of apps and services to synchronize files, get notifications, collect data, and there are many more capabilities of it. So uh, to further clarify, it, uh, let's suppose you want to upload set of files into OneDrive every day after completing your work. Or let's think of a scenario you need to post a tweet in Twitter after you uploading kind of a video into your YouTube channel. Or let's think you need to get a notification when someone add new row to in list in SharePoint. So any of these kinds of scenarios, you can get the help of Power Automate and you can automate these processes using Power Automate. So actually Power Automate is one component, one major component in Microsoft Power Platform. So it was previously known as Microsoft Flows and in 2019, Microsoft changed its name to Microsoft Power Automate by introducing several capabilities like robotic process automation capabilities. So introducing more about Microsoft Power Automate, as per Microsoft introduced, they introduced it as a no-code or a low-code platform that allows developers and non-developers to create automated processes having minimal IT knowledge. So also they have told it like that it, the more suitable way to introduce Microsoft Power Automate is as a low-code platform. Why I am told like this as because it also it, give, it allows us to to create automated flows without writing any single line of code to use its advanced features definitely we need to have some kind of programming knowledge as well so that's what i am saying it is a low code platform rather than no code platform so image here shows uh, how a configured flow will look like this kind of a nice ui will introduced by uh, our platform and you can set up your steps in your flow using this graphical user interface so it is very easy to configure as you see it has configured and added its steps and conditions and likewise it is very easily we can automate the process using microsoft power automate ui so with that basic understanding let's see what are the other capabilities of microsoft power automate so as i mentioned previously automate repetitive tasks like moving data among systems and automatic reminders for past due tasks. They are the basic use cases of Power Automate. So other than these basic use cases, there are several other use cases as well. So as an instance, so, uh, so there are some types of flows in Power Automate. They are really used to guide users to a certain kinds of process. So I'm going to talk more about these kinds of flows under different types of flows in platform, Microsoft Power Automate. So it is a one feature. So other than that, another important aspect is Microsoft Power Automate allows us to connect with over 300 data sources. And if these data sources or the connections are not satisfy our requirement, they allow us to connect with any publicly available API, APIs as well. So it is really great. So the final last one is the recently introduced feature. So they have introduced robotic process and automation capabilities. So with these capabilities, automating is not only for the cloud, we can automate desktop stock processes as well with new capabilities. So moving on. So as I mentioned previously, Power Automate gives us the ability to connect with 300 plus different data sources and they have offers up kind several set of services called connectors to connect with these different data sources. So when talking about the connectors, actually connectors are not only for the Power Automate, they are for the entire Power Platform for the same use case to connect with different data sources. But when it comes to the Power Automate, actually two properties of connectors are really important they are called as triggers and actions. So triggers are actually the event which cause to execute a cause to start the execution of a power automate flow. So this triggering point can be retrieval of an email, adding new IT 
item to a SharePoint list or an Excel list, anything. So there are many kinds of triggers available in Power Automate. So actions, actions actually define what happens in the middle of the Automate flow, what actually happens in the middle of the Power Automate flow. So these two attributes are really important when it comes to the Power Automate. So let's think of a scenario. If, if any of these connectors among 300 connectors doesn't satisfy our requirement. So in that case, it allows us to, us to create our custom connect connectors as well. But to do these kinds of things, advanced things, neatly, we need some programming knowledge as well. So in previous slides, so we got some under basic understanding about the Microsoft Power Automate and why what is Microsoft Power Automate is and what we can do with Power Automate. So now it's time to go through a different types of flows in Microsoft Power Automate. When talking about the different types of flows in Microsoft Automate for Power Automate, we can mention there are three main types of flows. They are called cloud flows, desktop flows, and business process flows. So since this is an introductory session, I am not going to deep into these, these topics. I am going to do just an overview about each type of these project flows. So actually, I am hoping to conduct several tech talk sessions for each type of these flows in the future. So I will deeply discuss about these flows in those tech talk sessions. So as for the overview, first we go with the cloud flow. So cloud flows are basically designed to work with the data in the cloud. So using cloud flows, we can create automated flows which are able to use the data in the cloud. So according to the triggering event, how we according to how we triggers, the cloud flows can further divide it into three different types of flows. They are called automated cloud flows, instant cloud flows, and scheduled cloud flows. So automated cloud flows are triggered using a predefined event. So this event can be, uh, as I explained previously, this event can be a trivial event email or adding video to your YouTube channel. So according to these kinds of events, it will trigger a power automate cloud flow. So instant flow is somewhat different than that. So we can initiate an instant cloud flow using our action. So user can click a button and initiate an instant cloud flow or select a row in the Excel table and he or she can start an instant cloud flow. And when talking about the scheduled flows, let's think of a scenario. You have a repetitive task, like you need to run that task in every day in a certain time or once a month or once a week or annually or any kind of time, time constraint. So in those cases, we can use scheduled cloud flows and there we can configure the time and according to the configured time it will run the flow so that are the basic three types of flows in cloud flows and then we have desktop flows so as i told previously so with with the introduction of robotic process automation capabilities now we can use the power automate in desktops as well so in here we can record the power automate desktop allows us to record our actions in our desktops and all servers and accordingly it will create automated flows so here also we have three different types of subtypes of flows. So the most famous one is Microsoft Power Automated Desktop. So this gives up several capabilities. Actually, it's widely used in integrating systems or moving data among systems or the servers. It is widely used for these kinds of things. And it now, now recently, they have given the ability to record user actions as well in the Power Automated Desktop. And the Selenium IDE, Selenium IDE allows users to read, record, and automate the website processes. And the Windows record, Recorder, so it is another feature, actually, it also record your action with your desktop and it, it also has the capability of autom create automated flows, but some of its features given to the power automate desktop now, and they are going to deprecate it since from November 30 of this year. So as the third and last type of power automate flows, we have business process flows. Actually, these flows are somewhat different than cloud flows and desktop flows, and because they are actually really focused about the automating, but rather than focusing about automating, business process flows work as working as providing guide for people to get a kind of a work done. So as you see in this image, it shows a business process flow. It shows a lengthy process with having several stages. So if you closely look at this, you can see how much of steps or how much is task we need to do in each and every step. So in these kinds of things, there is a high chance user go in a wrong way in or user will not go the right path. So using business process flows, we can ensure that all, that all of our users are going in the same or the correct path through a given process. So that's about the business process flows. So when talking about more about the automated flows in Power Automate, each of these types of flows has their own limitations as well. So as I mentioned previously, since this is an introductory session, I am not going to that deep. So I will explain and I, I will show these things in future sessions. So now it's time for Microsoft Power Automate demo. So I will explain the scenario for today's, today's demo. 
So here I have a doc Excel document with me. So I have a set of usernames and emails and document names. So the scenario for today's session is I need to send a personalized document. When I select a row in Excel sheet, I need to send a personalized document to the selected contact in this selected row. So this is our scenario for today. So let's see how we are going to implement this using Microsoft Automate. So as the starting point, you can go into your Office 365 account and in clicking this nine dots, you can find a link to Power Automate. And if we click in that, you will redirect to this Power Automate dashboard. Then first step is, so since I'm going to create a new flow, I'm you can see in the menu, I'm selecting create. So, so now we come to an important step in this process. So first, before creating our flow, I, we need Need to choose what kind of a flow we are going to create. So as I, I told previous, I am going to start my flow by selecting a row in Excel sheet. So it is going to start it manually. So the among these types of flows, as I explained previously, so the more suitable type of flow is instant cloud flow. So I'm selecting instant cloud. First step, I need to give a name, more email. Let's simple name like that. So, and another important step comes in. So we have to choose the trigger, what triggers our event. So as I told previous, I'm going to select a row in Excel sheet. And after that, I need to be able to start my flow. So I'm creating. So in there, you will get a nice kind of using interface here. So there you have to set several configurations. First, you need to do the location of your Excel file. It is on my OneDrive and the document library also in my OneDrive. So, and you need to give where the document is. So, and what is the table in document file or document so my table is table one so let's see, see table one and i'm going to table design here yes. my table name is table one that is correct right so far so the next as a next step is i need to get so i will show uh, my folder in one wrap so i kept my excel sheet here and i have added that personalized document into the same folder so what we need to do is we need to go through each of iterate through each of these documents and we need to see the document name so here is not not the link this is only on the document name document name match with the respective row that i have selected if it is so we need to get the document and send it as an attachment to this email so as the first step so we need to get the list of documents in the one drive so for that i am going to select the action there's an action called list files in folder so on the one drive we have list files in folder so this will get all the files in our given folder so i can give the folder so i give my demo folder so with this step now we have the list of items in our folder so then we need to iterate through each of these items the documents in our folder so for that i add a new step so here i add a control so as in programming we can we have several types of conditions or the controls also here we have apply to each do until scope switch many so here i am i am going to loop through the list since i need to loop through the list i'm selecting apply for each so i need to look through the value of each document in our files list as the next step i'm adding a new action and i'm adding a new control the new control would be a condition so because while looping through the documents if this name matches with any of this kind of document name so in that case we had to get that document so in that case i am adding a condition so you can see it is how easy so it shows all the things that are in the our one drive and in the excel as well so i need to compare its display name the one drive's files display name with our excel files so document name field so it gives the, these fields names and it's well so document name it is correct right now and we have configured the condition so there are different conditions as well it is less than greater than contains you can use any of them but in our scenario this is the most suitable thing so now we have to configure what we should do if our condition gets true if condition satisfied so what we need to do is we need to get the file here and make it as an attachment into an email and send it to the rec respective user so for that one first thing we need to do is we need to get the file content so for that i have another action it's called get file content let's see you can get the file using your given location so for the file you need to give a unique identifier the id is there so i'm giving that one so as the next step now actually it is a matter of sending an email so we have the file with us and we have to send send the email so sending email we have outlook in microsoft 
platform. This is the one. And there is an action, send an email. So it pops up to these kinds of very familiar user interface. So it is like writing an email. So we can get the dynamic content from our file. So you can see user email, so email. So the matching code of this email column, we can retrieve into this two field and we can add a subject as well. And as a body, I need to address the person personally. So I use his name as in the document, our Excel sheet and make it simple. So the attachment name, I will give the name of our document. So now the, our email is configured. So next step is we have to add the attachment. So for adding attachment, we have, we need to give attachment name for the attachment name. I will give the display name of the, our file and attachment content we need the file content so that's all we have configured our power automate flow and the only thing we have to do is save the flow so while saving it did this flow as well so it gives us a green tick so my flow is correct without uh, there are no any errors so to test this one so i'm going to my document so in the data tab you can find a adding call flow if if you don't see in your excel application so you can add it from the this insert tab and while browsing through this office edits. So in here, I'm going to click this flow thing and I'm actually going to select this row. In this tab, after selecting your flow, it will list down all the Excel related rows in your environment. So our created row is there. So it was named as demo email. So I am going to run this one. So ask for the permission. So I'm already signed in and I can continue and run the flow. So it's too easy. So it success ran the flow. And yes, at the meantime, I've got the email as well. So you can see my personalized email with that attachment is arrived so it is very easy like that so you can see the dynamic contents are also retrieved successfully so with that it comes to the conclusion of the demo for today so as well as the today's tech talk session as well so if you are really interesting about the microsoft power automate you can refer their documentation and they have some education so learning parts as well learning programs as well so as i have given one introduction power automate you can refer them as well so with these things we have come to the conclusion of the tech talk session for today and thank from my end for all to joining